It's got some of the best craftsmen in the world. Uh, it's got a lot of wealth and resources. Um, it's got, you know, huge muscle. If it, it could, if it could ever focus that muscle in one concerted thing. Hi, my name's Ivan, and in this episode of Realms Lore, Ed Greenwood and I are going to be discussing all things Thay. But what do we really know about Thay? Well, we know it's home to the infamous Red Wizards, but honestly, that's where most people's knowledge ends. In this episode, we're going to be talking about things like what does life look like in Thay. We're going to be talking about Zastam's motivations, and about things that you're probably going to want to remember if you're running a game involving Thay or the Red Wizards. Ed Greenwood also just released a publication on Dungeon Master's Guild, co-developed by Alex Kammer and Alan Patrick, and it's called Thay, Land of the Red Wizards, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Don't forget you can also find extended cuts of all of our Realms Lore videos, including much, much more on Ed's Patreon. I'll also include a link to that below. For most people who live in the realms, the Red Wizards are this sinister group of people from somewhere in the east who are generally bald, as in they shave their heads. They generally have tattoos all over them, and they, the tattoos may be magical. And they generally wear red robes of some sort. Uh, and there's some sort of ranking system, but they're not quite sure about it. And they know that Thay uh, also has other people in it. Number one, slaves. Thay is still a slaving empire. Now, it's not like it used to be when they ran around all the realms capturing people and they needed tens of thousands of slaves to do everything because the more recent innovation is undead. As in, you change any Thayan who gets killed, and that, of course, a lot of slaves get worked to death, um, gets turned into undead. So you no longer need tons and tons and tons of slaves um, and now slaves are sort of like a status symbol for wealthy Thay Thayan families. You know, how many slaves do you have? Oh, look, I have a slave who, who can write, you know, sort of thing. Uh, it's a status symbol. Um, and, and an inkling of this has sort of uh, seeped out of Thay to the rest of the realms. And what the, the other thing that people know about Thay, the general man in the street who's woman in the street who is nowhere near Thay, say along the Sword Coast somewhere, is that they're ruled by some undead necromancer lich, something like that, called Zastam, who is uh, mighty and very long-lived, and that he commands a whole bunch of um, red wizards, and they sort of run the country, and they're very arrogant, and they're very powerful, and they're very ruthless. But the average person on the Sword Coast would probably never see a Red Wizard and know it was a Red Wizard. What they would see is merchants. Merchants from Thay, who are there to um, sell stuff that Thay produces. And Thay's really good on, on silken textiles, you know, superior textiles, and already so in clothing perfumes, scents, wines, um, sweets, a jewelry, luxury goods. And what Say needs a lot of is raw materials. In particular, um, large amounts of Say have been logged and not regrown in time. And there have been, although the Red Wizards can control the weather, and they do, so the, the um, stereotype of Say is this desert where long lines of slaves die in the sun while overseers flog them to death in long lines as they cross the parched desert. That is a stereotype that is out of date. It was once true in parts of Thay, but, but Thay needs lots of lumber, and it needs uh, endless food and everything. Uh, so the, the merchants are everywhere trying to get deals, because why produce it yourself when you can get it for cheaper and easier, because if you don't care about losses on the way back to Thay, as long as they're not like 70%, so you've lost your, you know. Um, but if you don't care, and you're not buying things that are going to perish, because 
If you want exotic fruit and vegetables, you're growing them at home. So you don't care how long it takes something to get back to, say. Then you can get real bargoons. And they do, everywhere. So that's what the average person elsewhere, and by elsewhere I mean not a neighbor of Thay, Mulhorond and Aglarond and Impilter and the Great Dale and Murgom, nearby countries who either fight with Thay all the time or have to look over their shoulders to make sh sure Thay isn't invading again because Zastam got bored, um, <laughs> they have a different view of Thay. But I'm, I'm talking about everybody who's farther afield. That's what they know about Thay. So it's sort of like the land of mysterious wizards. And to a dungeon master, it's where you can, if you tinker with a spell or come up with your own new spell and you want to put it in the game but not make it accessible to your player characters, well, you have a red wizard show up sure. and hurl it at them. I created Zastam um, long before there was something called D&D. Um, and I sort of had an idea of what he was like. And and in the uh, Tyrants and Scarlet, George filled in his exact backstory um, and how he he rose ruthlessly to power. But the, the problem is he's an attractive prime mover villain. So over the years, TSR and Wizards of the Coast, various designers, both writers of novels and designers of of game products, including some game products that you wouldn't at the, off the face of it if you didn't know anything about the realms, think had say in them, like the the Neverwinter campaign setting book, um, oh, it has Sastam doing something nefarious in it. You know, um, but over the years, these various novels would have outcomes that the writer had dis had written into them or the the adventures the the game adventures would presume that your player characters either defeat Zastam or they die and the campaign ends well those assumptions mean that we end up with a Zastam who's a little bit of the keystone cops about him he keeps failing in all his big endeavors now one of the things that very clear is Zastam like all uh, tyrants um, gets tired of constant revolutions and intrigues behind his back and people who have other ideas and that's a problem if you're running the Red Wizards because most Red Wizards are brilliant people they're smart they're magically creative and they tend to be power mad because they wouldn't have gotten anywhere near a Zulkarate if they weren't They'd still be down on the rank of file, or they'd be dead, having been off by a rival somehow. Um, so they all think they can do things better than Zastam, and Zastam thinks he can do better than all of them. So over the years, he's dealt with these constant problems by replacing Zulkir after Zulkir with liches beholden to him, the the ultimate, the ultimate yes man. And underneath that are the real problem in, say, the rising merchant class, the successful wealthy merchants who take one look at all these nobles who have been parasites on them for centuries, and the red wizards who are these power-mad, arrogant, um, dangerous, because you never know which, one of the, which way that they're going to jump. You know, they wake up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning and they'll have you, they'll blast you and turn you into a frog. You know, it doesn't matter <laughs> sure. how wealthy, sure. you know. Um, but but the merchant class is the backbone of Thay and thinks of themselves as the backbone of Thay and is increasingly, how do I put this politely, irked, pissed off is right. probably what we'd say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With, with these red wizards. So, so therefore, we wrote this to peel back the curtain, you know, to give you yeah, enough a... about Thay that, that uh, because up until now, all the coverage of Thay... Uh, in in the in the the published realms canon has focused on the power it's sort of it's sort of like trying to tell the history of the united states by just talking about presidents supreme courts congress and the senate and ignoring the fact that it's this huge country where everybody lives well we actually hadn't seen anything of the country we didn't know how it worked we didn't know what people ate 
We didn't know how they went from place to place. We didn't know what they spent their lives doing. All we knew about Red Wizards, power! Red Wizards kill these people. Red Wizards invade <laughs> this country. Red Wizards invade that country. And they fail. And I always put in every Volus guide and so on I did, and in this, I put cuisine. You know, so you can actually, um, if you're crazy enough, you can actually make food from the country and eat it or try to eat it. And there is indeed a gentleman <laughs> on Twitter who is working his way through the cuisine, the published, already published cuisine of the realms, making all the recipes and trying them and having a <laughs> darn good time doing it. And and that's the th and, and by the way, um, most of the recipes I give you, you can substitute chicken, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have to use cobalt meat. Yes, yes, you yes. Can, please, you can substitute please do chicken. not. Yeah, yeah, uh, and please do not go out there and try and hunt down a beholder, because uh, <laughs> should you find one, it will be unfortunate for you, uh, <laughs> and, and and who knows what's endangered? Just use chicken, or in some cases, you'll read it <laughs> who and knows? go. What's this endangered? Be... <laughs> well. After everybody who yeah. buys the book, the thousands of people who buy the book go out and kill their beholder. <laughs> you know, um, uh, in some cases, you might want to uh, substitute pork or beef for chicken, eh, um, eh, eh. Uh, or something else. I mean, you know, I I tried it, but but I do indeed make these recipes for real. So you you might find you yourself hating the seasoning, but it will not kill you. Because I've made it for <laughs> real before I wrote it down. Um, because, <laughs> hey, social responsibility. Um, if you, yeah, if maybe you're gonna... you can put something out in the world if you don't know if it's good or not. Yeah. It's if you're, Yeah, you're going to have your fantasy stuff. You have to try it for real. So when I uh, write these spells, I go out into a park or cemetery. And I tr <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I've left very vague is other than telling you that hierarchy in the Red Wizards is ruthless and that there are social climbers. And for people who don't know Say but do know the realms, the Zentrium are sort of like Red Wizards on the cheap. The best way to role play any place in a fantasy setting is to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who lives there. And if you can adopt their mindset, then you can extrapolate and create to your heart's content and will all make sense. Assuming the people are have enough human nature that they don't feel alien to us. They they can be dragons, they can have tentacles coming out of their mouths, and they can have uh, 16 protuberances instead of the ones we're used to. Um, but if underneath, they, if they're sort of like Star Trek aliens, you know, makeup, but they're humans underneath, played by human actors. Okay, if 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 they have the same amount of human nature, and that was something that I was baking into the realms with the first few old minster books where he he's in Mithranor, and people kept saying, why are your elves so craven and, you know, backbiting and so on? And I'm saying, it's not human nature, it's also elven nature. It's what happens when you have a, a jaded society that has been too powerful for too long these things will happen we call it human nature because we're human but um, if you bake that into everything then you can use it to understand things so if you just put yourself in say in shoes that they'll have different you know if if it's a noble versus a red wizard versus a shopkeeper versus some guy who has to till the fields they'll all have very different opinions It'll all be based in human nature, and you can extrapolate from that. Okay, so if you're liking this video and you want to see more, I mean like a lot, lot more, you got to check out Ed Greenwood's Patreon. By becoming a patron today, you're unlocking access to extended versions of all of our videos, including Realms Lore and our conversations with creators, exclusive Discord roles, Realms Lore posts, live Q&A sessions, exclusive merch, and way more. Tiers start at just $3, and this is the best place anywhere to get the most exclusive Realms lore from the Sage himself. Or, if you want to support Ed another way, you can go to edgreenwood.net slash shop to get, well, this t-shirt or one of a number of other designs. We're releasing new ones, like, all the time. You too can be an unsupervised wizard. Okay, back to the video.
So uh, to wrap this up, I, I guess my, my final question to you would be, what is the number one fact that you wish people knew about Thay and or the Red Wizards? Something that may or may not be in that book, uh, but something that most people don't know, but you think is quintessential to playing and understanding Thay and the Red Wizards. Hmm. I would say it's twofold. See, I'm cheating already. Uh, <laughs> s- step one. <laughs> yeah, really working the system here, Ed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Step one is there's a lot more to Thay than Red Wizards. It's a complete country. It's huge, it's powerful, and there's a reason for that. Um, It's got some of the best craftsmen in the world. Uh, It's got a lot of wealth and resources. Um, It's got, you know, huge muscle. If it could could ever focus that muscle in one concerted thing, it could achieve a lot. That's, That's the number one. And number two, that the Red Wizards are a magical powerhouse because of the Athora. That magical, that that rock full of magic that floats inside Thaymount and makes the country magically powerful. And if you wiped out Zastam tomorrow, if you wiped out all his liches, and if you somehow managed to wipe out every single last red wizard, and you closed the borders of Thay, and you left them to their own devices for a couple centuries, maybe maybe four generations, and then you open the borders again, you'd find they were magically powerful. Because the Athora is imbuing everything with magic. So anybody who does have the gift, the, the aptitude to wield arcane magic, the art, would have experimented, and some of them would have survived the experimentations. And, <laughs> and you would have the equivalent of Red <laughs> Wizards, and maybe if they all remembered what had happened and they they revered the Red Wizards, they might be calling themselves Red Wizards, even though they aren't uh, the, the Red Wizards you knew beforehand. Or they might repudiate the Red Wizards, just like teenagers repudiate everything that their parents do, because it's not cool anymore. Um, uh, it could be either way, but you'd find magically powerful wizards playing a huge part in the society. Now, if the downtrodden masses were angry enough or remembered the Red Wizards with enough ill will, they would make darn sure that wizards couldn't rule. by, And they would have worked out some, you know. But it would still be a magically powerful country. It's sort of like that old saying, if there wasn't a bogeyman, it would be necessary to invent one. Yeah, you know, which yeah, is, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and there will always be a say or equivalent, and this particular area of the realms will always be magically powerful. If you let, say, the dragon princes of Murgom conquer it, then you would find uh, any any servitors, any underling critters they gathered around them, human slaves or otherwise, they could be, you know, if, if you want to go uh, full-on uh, dragon lance, Look at all the the dragon races. The the, the um, who they would gather around them and say would be magically powerful. That's the old old saying. Um, may you live in interesting times. The the uh, in theory ancient Chinese curse or proverb, which probably <laughs> yeah. isn't yeah Chinese or ancient. But but I mean it's that's the thing. <laughs> um, it's one an it's an interesting time to set your campaign in one of these turmoil periods when things are changing when the established order of power is being turned on its head, which is why so many fantasy novels of the high fantasy triple-decker, you know, doorstop novels concern a time when um, the world is either rushing towards destiny foretold, one ring to rule them all, or or um, somebody's already upset the apple cart, and what's going to happen now? It's just an interesting time to write about. It's an interesting time to role play as adventurers because it gives adventurers room to do stuff, and there'll be people who are weak or are wounded, or and they want revenge or they want a bodyguard, and they will hire adventurers to do it for them. Da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, right, right. 
Thank you so much to everyone that made it to the end of this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you loved it, subscribe. If you can't get enough, hit the bell icon to stay notified of everything I release. I would also like to thank our sponsor, RPG Match, a cool new community building service that uses AI to help tabletop role-playing gamers find their perfect game anywhere in the world. I'd also like to thank my patrons. Without you, this wouldn't be possible, and you are true protectors of the realms. And to all of my VIPs, John Foster, Gerald Brady, Hunter Weber, Michael Scattergood, Jeremy Grenmeyer, Robert McDonald, Varesia, Melody Sigers, Gustavo Tortato, Puffles, Brian Kletzel, LT2 Steven, and RPG Match. Your support is truly legendary. Thank you.